Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Red Donkey Projections. Today, we'll be taking a look at JHK's political forecast for the 2020 presidential election. We'll be discussing what we agree with, what we don't agree with, and we'll be analyzing their data here. My name's Lucas, I have Eric here with me. Hey guys. And let's get right into the episode. So I think it's important that we discuss some of these states that they put as safe that we don't necessarily agree with. Um, obviously, we agree with most of the states. Like we got these states down here. Um, At the West Coast. Yeah, uh, East Coast safe. Uh, personally, I characterize Virginia as being a uh, as likely. Uh, they put it as I think solid here. Um, yeah, I do think Virginia, you can't really definitively call it. Uh, I think what's interesting here is they're giving Joe Biden a 66.4% chance of winning. That's like huge. That's uh, two thirds. That's quite a bit. Um, it's less than Hillary Clinton, um, 538, even though this isn't 538, we can talk about 538. Uh, 538 gave Donald Trump a 28 chance of winning, which is slightly lower than 33.6 uh, right now. So it's very interesting. So I think I really like this data here. A chance of an upset is a chance of an NBA player making a three. I don't know how much how how often that happens, but it's very interesting to think about that they're giving this type of an analogy to um, you know represent our data here. Um, Eric, Iowa, uh, Eric, you want to talk about Iowa? What we think about Iowa here? Yeah. Um, so it does look like here that Donald Trump wins by a lean margin. Sixty-five point three percent goes to Trump. And 34 goes to Biden. I think I agree with this. Iowa voted for Trump last election. And it does not look like Iowa is swinging to the left anytime soon. We actually, in our previous video, state, said that it was swinging more to the right. So I do agree with this. And this type of margin will probably come up in the future with other candidates. Mm -hmm. I do want to remind our viewers that these numbers here aren't necessarily the number of votes that a candidate is getting, but it's rather the chance of that candidate winning that state. So it's not really saying here that Joe Biden is probably going to get 66% of the popular vote. Um, what they're trying to say is there's a 66% chance that he goes over to 70 and wins the uh, election. <clears throat> Alrighty. Um, let's discuss what else is here. I, uh, Ohio. This is this I also agree with. I do think that uh, Donald Trump has a pretty solid chance of winning the state, 66%. I do think that is pretty accurate here. Um, let's see. Is there anything we don't agree with here? North Carolina. This one I definitely don't agree with here. Yeah, I don't. Um, this is definitely going to the Republicans. Uh -huh. It's a very interesting chance of getting a one pair. That's a pretty high chance, though, of an upset happening. This is quite interesting. I do this give this one a lean Republican, I think. Um, we can't give this one solidly to, to Joe Biden, 55 to 44. Like, this is, I think this is pretty much a lean lean tilt. Uh, this is very interesting. Projected vote is 49.5% to 48.4. That's 5%. That is actually within the likely range. Uh, oh, I can't do math today. Uh, so that's a one percent difference, not five percent. Um, so that is between that is that is in the lean range, which is quite interesting. Um, I, I don't think that uh, Joe Biden will be able to carry the state. Inter oh, this is interesting here. It looks like Trump was leading before. Maybe Roy Cooper had something to do with it. Yeah, I was actually just about to touch upon that. Um, how because of all of the a pandemic stuff going around and uh, self quarantining and social distancing. Roy Cooper, the governor of North Carolina, or yeah, South Car North, North Carolina, and Donald Trump are clashing over whether to have the Republican National Convention in North Carolina. Um, I think they usually do it here is because it's a battleground state. So having the Republican Convention here can give them some popularity. And not having the convention there could swing results somewhat. So it's going to be interesting to see how much of a role that plays in the election. Uh, yeah, I do think that our assumption there is accurate. This is really interesting. Like, this is about the the coronavirus peak. I think May fourth. Yeah, looks yeah like North Carolina has a bunch of cases rising. Yeah, up. this is like when it, when it goes up again. I think this is really interesting to look at, but I don't think that Biden will be able to carry the state. Yeah, um, either this way, it's really interesting to look at because, like, I remember from a few weeks ago, they didn't have North Carolina going for Joe Biden, and neither did they have Wisconsin. Wisconsin actually went to Donald Trump. Uh, pretty close margin. This is pretty interesting to look at. 
Uh, yeah, I do want to talk about Wisconsin next. This is a huge change from what it was a few weeks ago. From a few weeks ago, it was like it was nearly tied. It was like 49-49. Right now, Joe Biden's – the chance of him winning right now, um, their projection is uh, 21. Yeah, 21%. That, that's quite a bit, actually. I, I don't mm-hmm. agree with that either. Um, I do think Wisconsin is the state that uh, Donald Trump has the most chance of winning uh, this election. Interesting, a two point lead, 2.3 percent. Um, and being yeah. clear, this is okay, this is interesting actually. Mm-hmm. And once again, we see that kind of change here. I think right here, April 8th, it dips completely. Yeah, they used to be stagnant if you look in the beginning, their lines were like intertwining, mm. like two they scenes. Were. Now they're just branch apart. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't agree with this. This, it, I don't think Biden will win by that much of a margin or a land, like, percentage point. Uh, yeah, I do want to remind our viewers once again that this, this isn't a percentage. It is showing the chance. This one is the percentage of the vote. This one mm. is showing like the amount. Yep. Um, yeah, this is interesting. I think this is probably where his peak was during the coronavirus. Uh, Trump's approval rating did go up for a few uh, days or a few weeks during the coronavirus. Yes, uh, it did go up quite a bit. This is probably his peak. And then his approval rating started to fall again, Mm -hmm. which kind of makes sense why Biden has a higher chance of winning. Yeah. um, I don't think it's a 60% chance. I don't think. I think Mm -hmm. 55 at most. 60 is a bit too generous for Joe Biden here. Yes. Interesting polling data too. Wow, plus 10 here. But again, we can't trust polling data, as we've mentioned yep. in the videos before. We multiple times. So interesting. Yeah. Um, gosh, let's see. What else do we have? There Arizona we is completely toss up. Mm, interesting. Uh, I don't think completely toss up. 54% chance, chance of getting a one pair. So that is slightly more than a 50 50 split. Um, this is a 1% lead. Again, the same thing we see happen here. At some point, they cross over. At uh, one point, Trump's leading, and they cross. It's quite mm-hmm. interesting to look at. Um, yeah, projected vote is going to be very close. Arizona definitely will be very close this election cycle. Yep. Experts rating. Yeah, a lot of experts do rate this. Uh, most of them are tossed. I think one one source did put this one as a lean R, which is quite interesting. Fundamentals, point one. Okay, it's basically nothing. Polling average, plus three, plus total, plus 3.2. That is, that's interesting. Hmm. Good things to look at. Uh, Eric, you want to talk about Florida? Let's take a look at Florida, actually. Yeah. Um, maybe- Looking at Florida, um, they put uh, Biden in the lead by um, 17, you know, 17%. And th- this is the poll, and this is the votes. Even then, even then, Biden is in the lead. I don't necessarily agree with this. Um, in our presidential videos, we put a uh, tilt Republican for Florida. That seems like a more realistic prediction since Donald Trump did win it in 2016. He was able to get the majority of the vote. And I think that's going to happen. This graph is very interesting. Literally, mm-hmm. the Democrat, the Democratic and the Republican lines are going in two completely different directions ever since mid-April, which is interesting because even amid the pandemic, Ron DeSantis, the governor, and Donald Trump are still heavy um, allies and even then biden is somehow gaining the vote not by much but he he's gradually increasing yeah it is really interesting to look at uh it seems like all these graphs are the same pattern we start out with the trump leading and then we have his uh, little approval rating blip and then uh, when approving crashes uh biden takes a huge this is really interesting look at. it seems to be the same thing every single time do I necessarily agree with Biden winning the state? No, I don't. I think that this will go to Donald Trump at the end of the day, although it's going to be close. I do think that by, uh, Trump should be able to carry this. Um, let's see. What else do we need to discuss here? So, interesting. Interesting. All right. Montana is likely that... Okay, nah. Oh, no, that's not... That, that just means... It means it's not 100%, but it basically is at this point. Um, mm-hmm. interesting with the Rust Belt that, uh, Donald Trump, uh, won in 2016, Pennsylvania, Michigan. Wow. Michigan 73% for Joe Biden. Let's see what the projected vote is. 5%. That is 5.1%. That is what state is this? Uh, Michigan. This is actually oh fitting God. our likely characterization right now because yeah. five to 15 is Michigan. That, that's quite interesting. 73% chance of winning. I mean, 
yeah, it makes sense why it's going up because Gretchen Whitmer and Donald Trump are not on the best of terms at the moment as of the handling of coronavirus. So that I think is taking a toll on Donald Trump's approval rating and as a result is giving Biden the gradual increase in votes. Yeah, this is really interesting to look at. Um, wow, um, and very interesting. Let's look at Pennsylvania now. Pennsylvania does also look to be pretty uh, leaning towards yeah. Joe Biden here. I don't think it's yeah. I don't think it's going to be by this much, but um, we put tilt D right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we put. I love those um, odds. They're so yeah. The analogy. <laughs> these are quite interesting. Analogies are quite interesting. Wow, is it really that hard for an LV pattern to get on a base? I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> this is about four point four point about four percent. Um, that's yeah. I I it's a little bit generous yeah once again we see here we have a close and then coronavirus post like you know big coronavirus stuff projected vote we see the same thing uh this is biden where biden was born in scranton which is a pretty big city in pennsylvania very interesting that we see that he is looking like according to the projection to win um let's go back to the national forecast now I think we covered all the major states here. Uh, North, North, uh, no, North, I was about to say North Hampshire. Uh, New Hampshire is looking like um, this is accurate. I do put this one as likely yeah. as well. Georgia looks lean. Is this lean? I think this is lean. 60% yeah. lean. Interesting. Let's take a look at Texas, actually. I want to look at Texas. This does look quite accurate here. 6%, that's a likely margin. I do think that's what's going to happen. Um, it looks like it's... Okay, no. I was going to say it's kind of narrowing up, but not really. Uh, projected vote does look like very interesting, once again. Um, I, I do agree with this. I think it will go to Trump, but uh, you know, in the future, we do have to take a look at this more because it is trending more and more to become purple. Mm -hmm. Now, the final state I think we want to talk about today is Georgia. Yep. This is actually closer than Texas. Um, that makes sense. Maybe they're, you know what, maybe they're taking into account maybe Stacey Abrams has chosen. Uh, Stacey Abrams, if she is chosen as the VP, that will be a huge boost to Biden. Mm -hmm. She has that name recognition. This is 2%, which is a lean. Interesting. I think we put this one as likely. This yeah. margin does also seem to be narrowing up here, although mm -hmm. it does, does look like it's dropping for Biden a bit. Yeah. Little calculations. Polling average. It looks like he is leading in the polls, but we can't always trust the polls. Yep. That's what the mainstream media got wrong. They interpreted these polls wrong in 2016. The polls did not get the election wrong. Most of them were within the margin of error. The mainstream media interpreted it incorrectly. That's why Hillary lost. Um, let's head back to the national forecast now. I think we discussed everything uh, regarding state-by-state -state basis. Let's take a look at actually in general here. Wow. 300. Wow, yeah, Joe, <laughs> Joe Biden goes way over the limit. Mm. This is more than uh, 2016, 50%. Wow, winning by 5% the popular vote. This is for the, uh, I think they're assuming this is a libertarian candidate. Oh no, I think they're assuming this is all other candidates, but wow, 4.3 is actually quite a bit uh, to get. Ever changing race, win the White House. As, as we said before, it has changed dramatically. I checked this, for the first time I checked this out, it was like right here. Now it's all the way out here. Uh, very interesting to look at. Yeah, this looks about good. Yeah, that makes mm. sense. Interesting. So Arizona, because of this, they did project Arizona to go to him now. It's helpful graph, tipping points. Interesting. Florida, Florida. Mm. It's quite interesting. Yep. Well, that's the end of our video today. Um, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you like our content, please hit the subscribe button. We'll see you in our next video tomorrow. See ya.